camera right A confrontation now. between a local right TV wheel. reporter and this irate woman could have ended here. But it quickly escalates into a shocking assault that leaves San Diego to TV reporter John Mattis battered, bruised, and bleeding when her husband shows up. Hey, Joe. Joe, call the police. Call the police. The video is broadcast nationwide. I assume you've looked better than you look this morning. Reporters getting beaten up in the line of duty. Some video you just got to see. This vicious beating is the result of a series of reports by Mattis into the affairs of this man, Sam Suleiman, local landlord and developer. Call the police. Mattis has been reporting on Suleiman's business dealings for the Fox TV station News 6 in San Diego. For three months, I've been investigating Mr. Suleiman and his real estate empire, which was based on allegations of mortgage fraud. No fraud charges are ever filed by the San Diego district attorney, but Mattis continues to report on Suleiman. And after his third story, Mattis says he gets a frightening phone call. In the middle of the night, I'm going to come get you. You're an insect. You better retract. Mattis says threatening late night calls to his personal cell phone become regular and frequent. All of the threats were directed at my reporting. All of the threats were directed at shutting me down. The now notorious mauling starts while Mattis is interviewing this man, B.K. Phillips, for a fourth story about a pair of previous run-ins with Suleiman. This is our house. Phillips lives next door to one of Suleiman's buildings, and he says first they have a neighborly squabble. And on a second occasion, as Phillips walks through his neighborhood back to his home on a Sunday afternoon, he says Suleiman crosses the line. Suleiman showed up out of nowhere screeched up in his car, kicked open his car door, ran out and literally was posturing like, you know, I'm going I'm I'm to kick your butt, I'm going to beat your ass, and a bunch of other colorful uh, expletives. Phillips immediately calls police to the scene and later gets a restraining order against Suleiman. So when reporter John Mattis comes to interview him, he's all too happy to share everything he knows. I basically had enough harassment from this man. John was just about to interview me when Rosa Barraza shows up. Rosa Barraza is Suleiman's wife, and she's angry. But out of nowhere, his wife drives up in a car from there and comes running up and starts screaming. Why are you doing this? We're you doing didn't have story. enough with We're what doing you had? And I'm thinking, Why what am I doing to you? You just invaded someone's private property. You invaded our personal space. And now you're interfering with an interviewer. And then she proceeds to smack me with a bottle. Oh. That's not appropriate. I don't give a It doesn't end there. Do you like Iguana or Ensenada? Which one do you like better, huh? Yeah. Barras is asking Mattis where on the other side of the Mexican border he wants to be buried. I'm going to put you in the other side of the yeah, country. Is... Next, Barras turns her attention to the cameraman. Stop it! She's leaving and then proceeds to batter the camera and knock the cameraman down. As he pulls his camera from the, looking at the ground, if you listen very closely, you can hear tire screeching. Suleiman shows up. At this time, I'm thinking he's actually coming to fight with me because we've had words so many times. And I got there enough time to, well, what I thought was enough time to keep John from getting a lot of damage, but Suleiman, he fights like a badger, you know? I feel this hand coming across my face as he's putting these long fingernails in my ears, trying to rip my ears off. And then I can feel him trying to rip my mouth apart. Three of us were in this pile of flesh trying to grapple, but he's proceeding to shred my face. And this continues on, and I'm thinking, OK, my life is flashing. I'm thinking, well, OK, I'm going to be maimed. I'm going to lose my eyesight, but I'm going to live. Then I hear him scream to his wife, honey, get the gun. A gun? It could have gotten much worse. But lucky for Mattis, no gunfire. They were so excited about the opportunity to whack me they forgot to bring the gun. By this point, a crowd has formed and the police are on their way, called by witnesses to this very bizarre street brawl. Stop. Get on here! Turn around! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Suleiman's a crazy person, obviously. When the sirens start getting closer and closer, you could literally see the switch in his eyes where the adrenaline must have stopped pumping. He was like, oh, what did I just do? And he, he, he literally looked like he was like chemically imbalanced at that point. The onlookers stand by in disbelief. In fact, tourists who came upon the fight scene 
thought that this had all been scripted and that this was some kind of Hollywood production because this whole elaborate setup of the cars in the middle of the street and with his wife running around looking for the gun. They couldn't believe that the blood flying around was anything but fake. But the blood and the injuries to John Mattis are all too real. He's all cut up, bruised, a few broken ribs, and has to spend the night in the hospital. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! In court, Sam Suleiman, as part of a plea agreement, pleads guilty to felony assault. He's sentenced to a year in jail and three years probation. His wife pleads guilty to misdemeanor assault with a deadly weapon and is placed on three years probation. She's also ordered to do 30 hours of community service. John Mattis, I'm gonna see the living pen out of you. Thank you, Sam. John Mattis is still concerned that this may not be over. At the sentencing, the judge gave Mr. Sullivan an opportunity to apologize to me, and yet he turned to me and said, that man was the cause of my problems. That man is dangerous. He uses a microphone as a deadly weapon. Mattis is thankful that BK Phillips decided to intervene. He's also thankful the cameraman thought better and decided not to intervene. He kept shooting the whole time so that when the police came, it couldn't be, oh, Mr. Mattis attacked me. No. The cameraman says, why don't you look at the tape? They looked at the tape, and that was it. He was gone. So the cameraman saved the situation, saved me.